Thanks for tuning in. You are listening to Gnostic Studies. <clears throat> and this evening, or whatever time it is for you, we'd like to do another part of our series on Tarot and Kabbalah. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to do Arcanum 19, but before we jump into that, we'd like to review the previous class, Arcanum 18. So, let me give you the link in the comments area. If you're interested in looking at Arcanum 18. Uh, we have on the screen there the PDF handout that's at the bottom of the page. If you're interested in, in downloading it, in any case, we'll just read the relevant parts. <clears throat> Arcanum 18, the Hebrew letter is Tzaddik. English names are the moon, twilight, and night. Its meaning is twilight or occult enemies. Remember that occult means hidden, hidden enemies. The Black Lodge, the Abyss, Temptation, Demons. The dangers of initiation. The hidden and secret enemies who appear at any moment and propose to damage the initiation. This is the subterranean struggle for the dominion of the ninth sphere. In Arcanum 18, we have to fight bloody we have to fight bloody battles against the tenebrous ones who do not want the initiate to escape from their claws. This is the path of the razor's edge. This is the path which is filled with dangers both within and without, as the venerable master Sivananda says. In the internal worlds, the tenebris of Arcanum 18 violently assault the student. The most dangerous potion which the tenebris use to take the student from the path of the razor's edge is the intellect. Transcendental Axiom May your charity be an inexhaustible granary, and may your patience be no less inexhaustible than your charity. Uh, we won't cover the explanation of the card that we covered last time. But what's interesting here is, for us specifically, the related explanation, which comes from our friend Eliphas Levy, Frenchman. He says, the symbol or image for the 18th Hebrew letter, Tzadi, is shadow and reflection and corresponds to poisonous magic, love potions, spells, and magnetism. It is the number of initiation and of dogma, of hierarchy and of mystery, of black magic and sorcery. Here in the moonlight, those potions are brewed which compel love instinctive passions, and other obsessions. Here we have the art of poisoning reason. These are the devices of the enemy, and from such influence it behooves us to seek protection. One of the methods of poisonous magic is the evil eye. In order to protect oneself from it, the experts say one must carry horns, and people who take everything literally decorate themselves with little horns without thinking any further of the sense of the allegory contained in the expert's words. Horns are the attributes of Jupiter, of Ammon, of Bacchus, and of Moses. They are the symbol of moral or ethical power and of enthusiasm. 
And the experts mean to say, through this metaphor, that one must dominate with a great audacity, with a great enthusiasm, or with a great willpower, the fatal current of instinct. Weakness always sympathizes with vice, because vice is a weakness which assumes the mask of strength. Madness, absurdity, or folly hold reason in horror and delight in the exaggerations of falsehood. Therefore, in the first place, cure your diseased understanding, your subjective reasoning. The cause of all bewitchments, the poison of all potions, and the power of all sorcerers is there. Faith gives confidence, so have confidence, not in men who misalign reason, for they are fools or impostors, but in that eternal reason, which is the divine verb, that true light which is offered like the sun to the intuition of every human creature coming into the world. If you remember absolute reason, if you desire truth and justice before all things, then you will have no need to fear anyone, and you will love only those who are deserving of love. Your natural light will intuitively repel that of the wicked, because it will be ruled by your willpower. Additionally, on the handout we have um, practice to protect ourselves from black magic, working with the elemental intercessor that we mentioned before, making a magical circle of protection with the mantras Elion, Melion, Tetragrammaton, as well as um, some excerpts and reference to chapters 11, 12, and uh, maybe even, I'm sorry, 10, 11, maybe even 12. <clears throat> of a book called Logos Mantram Thurgi by Samaelo and Veor. <clears throat> he says that there are methods which black magicians use to attack us during dreams, even when we're awake through black magic, <clears throat> with psychic obsessions, with hostilities, organic illnesses, vices, through certain aspects of culture, by means of false prophets, and with the intervention of inferior elementaries, or what we could call elementals. And the example he uses is the bat. So we refer you to those chapters in order to learn more. Those books are generally available online for free. So we'll stop with our review unless you have any questions. As always on the handout at the bottom we have the different tarot cards so we can see the different symbolism from various time periods. Some helpful, some less helpful. So it doesn't look like there's any questions or comments about that right now. So we'll jump into today's class. And let me give you that link. In the comments area. So today's class, as we mentioned, is Arcanum 19. Cough. It's related with the number 100 as well as 19. We have here on the screen the various symbols that correspond to it. In uh, ancient cultures.
Arcanum 19. In the Kabbalah of Prediction, it promises total victory, be it through one's own efforts or with the help of other persons. Arcanum 19 is the Arcanum of Victory or of Success. This victory is related with all aspects of life, economic, social, political, moral, etc. The Kabbalistic synthesis of Arcanum 19 is 1 plus 9 equals 10. The 10 is a profoundly sexual number. Here we have the circle and the line, the mysteries of the Lingam Yoni. It is not possible to attain self-realization except by means of the transmutation of the sexual energy. In Arcanum 19, a great alliance is established between two souls. Man and woman must kill desire to achieve the great alliance in order to realize the great work. Hebraic letter, Kof, hour, the tenth hour of Apollonius. The doors of the heavens open and man comes out of his lethargy. This is the number 10 of the second great initiation of major mysteries which permits the initiate to travel with the etheric body in the, or in the jinn state. This is the wisdom of John the Baptist. Decapitation. Right, decapitation means to have the head cut off. And so in um, esoteric symbolism, this is related with complete elimination of the ego, which is part of the great work. Transcendental Axiom Take the shield of your faith and advance with a decisive step, be it in favor of the wind or against all winds. The Radiant Sun, Kof, the Philosophical Stone The Philosophical Stone is the semen. Let's remember that in Gnostic esotericism, both men and women have seed. Semen is a Latin word that means seed. The sexual substance, the crystallization of all the hormones, all the food, and the so-called essence or jing in Chinese medicine <clears throat> that both men and women have. Whosoever practices sexual magic every day is working with the philosophical stone. Whosoever raises their seven snakes upon the staff acquires the following powers. The power to never die and to remain in the physical body during the consummation of the centuries. The power to govern all the elements of nature. The power to make oneself immune against all type of firearms. The power to make oneself the master of of all creation, the power to see and hear everything, the power to be wise, the power to govern the celestial militias, etc. All that is necessary in order to work <clears throat> in order to work with the philosophical stone. All that is necessary in order to work with the philosophical stone is to have a good spouse. The only thing that we need is the spouse in order to transform ourselves into gods. That's from chapter 19 of Manual of Practical Magic. So now we'll move on to our second reading from Esoteric Course of Kabbalah, chapter 19. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments area. Let us now study Arcanum 19 of the Tarot. The hieroglyphic is a radiant sun and two wholesome children holding hands. In the Egyptian Tarot, the hieroglyphic is of a man and a woman who hold in their hands the symbolic Tau cross. This type of cross is phallic. Arcanum 19 is the Arcanum of the Alliance. 
In lesson three of this course, we broadly spoke about the salt, the sulfur, and the mercury. Really, these are the passive instruments of the great work. The positive principle is the interior manganese of Paracelsus. We need to transmute and thereafter sublimate the sexual energy to the heart. It is impossible to progress in the great work without the force of love. Let me read that to you again. It is impossible to progress in the great work without the force of love. The psychological eye does not know how to love. The eye, the ego, is desire. It is easy to confuse desire with that which is called love. Desire is a substance that decomposes into thoughts, volitions, feelings, romances, poetry, tenderness, sweetness, anger, hatred, violence, etc. People are always tricked by the poison of desire. Lovers always swear that they are in love, when in reality they are only desiring. The human being does not know that which is called love. However, we have in the very depths of our being a principle that loves. Unfortunately, we do not have this principle incarnated. This principle is the soul, the interior manganese of Paracelsus. If people had incarnated that soul principle, then they could love. Only from heart to heart, from soul to soul, is it possible to love. Unfortunately, people only have Satan incarnated. Satan does not know what love is. Satan only knows about desire. That is all. Every day we see many lovers that swear eternal love to each other. Yet, after they satisfy their desire, that desire that they believe to be love, then disillusion comes along, disenchantment, and then total disappointment arrives. Desire is the great trickster. Whosoever wants to work in the great work has to annihilate desire. It is necessary to know how to love. Love has its particular peculiar love has its peculiar happiness and its infinite beauty. People do not know that which is called love. Love is similar to the feeling shown by a newborn baby. Love forgives everything. Gives everything. It does not demand anything. It does not ask for anything. It only wants the best for the one that it loves. That is all. The true feeling of love is perfect. Satan knows nothing about perfection because Satan is desire. If you want to love, be prudent. This is related also with Arcanum 9, prudence. If you want to love, be prudent. Do not confuse love with desire. Do not let yourself be cheated by the great trickster. Within yourself is an embryo of soul that is able to love. Really, your love is embryonary because it is an embryo. But if you annihilate desire, you will feel that spark of love. When you learn to feel that spark, then that spark will become a flame and you will experience that which is called love. Strengthen your embryo of soul with the blessed flame of love and then you will achieve the miracle of your incarnation. It is necessary for you to be integral and that is only possible by loving. In Arcanum 19, a great alliance is established between two souls. Man and woman must kill desire in order to achieve the great alliance. 
If you want to incarnate your soul, you must then celebrate the great alliance of Arcanum 19. Reflect a bit. Up until now, you were just a living specter, a sleeping specter. You, wretched specter, you sleep during the slumber of your physical body and after your death. You escape from the graveyard or cemetery dreaming. Miserable specter, wretched soulless creature, reflect and meditate. You must celebrate the great alliance of Arcanum 19 so that you can incarnate your soul and come to truly be. You poor creature, you are not yet a being. You are in dreams. You die without knowing how and you are born without knowing how. Only the blessed flame of love can make you truly exist because you do not yet have a real existence. Only with the Arcanum AZF can you engender your Christic vehicles. With those vehicles, you will be dressed first with your inner Buddha and then with your internal Christ. This is how you will become integral. You need to be integral. Remember, good disciple, that now you are nothing but a sleeping specter and that your present internal vehicles are only mental forms that you must disintegrate and reduce to cosmic dust. He's talking about the lunar bodies. Be patient in the work. If you want to incarnate your internal Christ, then you must be sour like the lemon. Kill not only desire, but even the very shadow of desire. Be perfect in your thoughts, words, and works. Be pure, pure, pure. The Philosophical Stone Sex is represented by the Philosopher's Stone. This is the Heliogabalus Stone. The elixir of long life cannot be acquired without this stone. The two columns of the temple, Jaquin and Boaz, are the man and the woman who are in an alliance in order to work with the Philosophical Stone. Whosoever finds the Philosophical Stone is transformed into a god. The Great Tempter The psychological I, the ego, is the Great Tempter. The I, the ego, hates sexual magic. The I wants the complete satisfaction of desire. The I is the, <clears throat> the, I is the one who thinks and searches. The being does not need to think. The being does not need to search. When we're working in the great work, the I, the ego, does not feel secure. Thus it searches for that which is called security. Students of the luminous path always fall into the abyss of perdition when searching for security. Do not allow yourself to be seduced by the great tempter. While the mind is searching for something, while the mind is searching for security, while the mind is searching around for results, it is because we are not ready for the work, the great work. Satan always wants security. Satan always wants results. Satan is always searching for something. Do not allow your mind to be poisoned by Satan. Do not waste your mental energy torpidly. With the battling of reason, we waste our mental energy. Let's remember that it is the I, the ego, who reasons. The soul does not need to reason. It is painful to see the specters of death reasoning about problems that do not exist. Those sleeping specters are worthy of pity. Really, the I, the ego, is the great reasoner. Love when the mind does not search anymore, when it does not seek refuge, when it does not seek for security, 
when it does not covet more books or knowledge, when it ignores the memories of desire, then only love will remain within us. That is what is called love, how great it is to love. Only the greatest souls can know how to love. That's the end of our second reading from chapter 19 of Esoteric Course of Kabbalah. We have a comment here. It says, To make oneself immune against firearms reminds me of the story of Rasputin. Yep. I know what you're talking about. Rasputin was a uh, Russian, uh, I guess you could say a monk, but he was sort of um, not exactly a traditional monk. In any case, he worked with not wasting the sexual energy and um, became influential in politics. Russian politics, and then his enemies were against him, and they tried to kill him a number of times and had difficulty with that. Uh, eventually, uh, I think they drowned him and shot him a bunch of times. Um, so, but it, it took a lot, it took a lot. It's an interesting story, and actually, I believe they talk about it at the beginning of the book called Mystery of the Golden Blossom. All right, let's jump back into the um, the third reading from whoop, too much from uh, Initiatic Path in the Arcana of Tarot and Kabbalah, Chapter Nineteen, Description of the Card, Inspiration in the Waters of Life. There are three flowers, which represent the three primary forces. In the middle, a couple is holding hands, forming the Tao Qi. In the upper part, a radiant fire is above their heads. I'm sorry, a radiant sun is above their heads, with seven rays. reminding us of the fire's seven degrees of power. This arcanum teaches us that through transmutation, we attain final liberation. Esoteric significance of Arcanum 19. This Arcanum 19 is the Arcanum of Alliance. It represents the creative fire and the philosophical stone. In order to realize the work, which is the great work, we have to work with the philosophical stone. The ancients worshipped the sun in the symbolic form of a black stone. This is the Heliogobalus stone. This is the stone which we must make um, this is the stone with which we must make the foundation of the temple. That stone is sex, represented by the philosophical stone, the Heliogobalus stone. Without that stone, we cannot attain the elixir of long life. The two columns of the temple, Jaquin and Boaz, are man and woman united in order to work with the philosophical stone. Whosoever finds the philosophical stone transforms themselves into a god. Those who build upon the living stone will incarnate the verb. Those who build upon the sands will fail, and their structures will tumble into the abyss. Those sands are the theories, dead religions, etc., etc. Arcanum 19 is the arcanum of the work of the sun. The man and woman holding hands and the sun shining upon them 
indicates that this arcanum is related with the mystery of fire. The sexual aspect of this arcanum we find in the Kabbalistic addition 1 plus 9 equals 10. This is a number which is profoundly sexual. We have here the circle and the line, the mysteries of the lingam yoni. It is only possible to attain self-realization by means of sexual transmutation. This is the sacred alliance between man and woman in order to achieve the magnum opus. In meditating upon the saints of medieval times, I was able to discover that although these saints were celibate, they had worked in the night sphere in other lives, and that they had developed the sacred fire with the Sahaja Maithuna. If we analyze the life of St. Philip, we find that feeling of love for the divine. He fell to the ground and upon raising himself, felt with his hand a thoracic protrusion. He examined it and discovered that he had formed a protrusion upon the heart and felt that the sacred fire of the Holy Spirit consumed him. After his death, it was discovered that the artery between the heart and the lungs was very thickened. He had, however, lived to an old age and had been able to say at which hour he was going to disincarnate. There is no doubt that he had the sacred fire due to the practice of the Maithuna in previous lives. Catherine de Bourbon, Catherine de Bourbon was an extraordinary mystic. This was demonstrated in her life. When she died, she was buried without a coffin. But on passing her tomb, many persons noticed that a strong fragrance was emitted and many sick persons were cured. After several months, the priests removed her body in order to give her a good burial. It was undecayed and gave off a fragrance. It was placed on exhibition. The cadaver had a nasal hemorrhage. It perspired and emitted perfume. It was seated in a chair in a chapel in Italy. The eyes opened and it remained undecayed. One of the signs that someone has attained intimate self-realization of the being, says the Tao, is that the body being conserved without decay and emitting perfume. When the Akash, the causa causorum of ether, and the basic principle of the tatwas, is concentrated in the sexual organs, it is then the psychic basis of the blood, and pure Akash becomes the nutriment of these mystics. They carry this substance to the blood and can live without eating. There are initiates who can live without clothes in the snow without eating, and in order to attain this, extraordinary concentration is needed. Catherine of Siena said that she felt herself in Christ, being nourished by his blood. The relationship of the Akash with the blood and of the blood with the Akash is tremendous. The mystics concentrated on the blood of Christ, and attracted only pure Akash. For this, tremendous concentration is needed, and the energies have to be transformed. In the age of gallantry, in the Renaissance, in those times of wigs, petticoats, purple cassocks, beautiful dances, fine carriages, man knew how to appreciate woman and made sacrifices for her. Man was capable of making any sacrifice for a lady. He knew how to appreciate her and did not skirt even at giving his own life. There were undoubtedly abuses of this, but man in this period knew how to see in woman all their ideals. In the 20th century, man has forgotten the sexual mysteries. The male has lost the sense of moral vigor. Humanity is in decadence. The enemic essence is separated by all the entities of the ego. But when one is dissolving it, 
one is forming the seminal pearl. When the ego is destroyed, the golden embryo is formed, and the immortal principles then enter into the human being. But this is a sexual question. In other times, much was intuitively understood about that which is the creative energy. The human being today is nothing more than a legion of devils filled with intimate contradictions. The only value we have is the essence which is broken up amongst the eyes, the egos. That's the end of chapter 19. Next we'll read from chapter 41. But we just want to see if you guys have any more questions or comments in the meantime. Doesn't look like it at this time at least, so we'll jump back in. Initiatic Significance of Arcanum 19 This is the Arcanum of Alliance, or of Victory. In previous lessons, we have already spoken about the salt of alchemy, which is the physical body, the mercury, which is the Eint Seminus, within which is the Eint Virtutis, and the sulfur, which is the fire, the fohat, the kundalini. The mercury must be transformed into sulfur. The serpentine fire, which is a result of transmutation. These three are the passive instruments of the great work, or magna obra. We have to seek the positive principle, the interior mag magnus of Paracelsus, the magical principle. When the three elements, salt, mercury, and sulfur, are found without having done the work, they are negative elements. But by working in the great work, they become positive. This is the magic principle, or interior magnus. Arcanum 19 obviously establishes a great alliance between man and woman. An alliance so as to realize the great work. This great alliance has many aspects. The gospel speaks of the need to have wedding garments. We must not forget the wedding at which someone did not wear their wedding garments. And they bound him, and the Lord ordered that he be cast into the darkness where only the gnashing of teeth is heard. See Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. The famous clothing, the wedding garments referred to, is the Egyptian sahu, or the to soma heliacon in Latin, that is to say, the body of gold of the solar human being, the wedding garment with which to attend the banquet of the Easter lamb. So it is necessary to comprehend that in order to have that body, the great alliance is needed, the work in the ninth sphere between man and woman. Just as below we have a great alliance in order to attain illumination, above another great alliance is needed. The divine spirit, Atman, the human soul, Manas, and the spiritual soul, Buddhi. The two souls must be fused, the masculine human soul with the feminine spiritual soul. This is not achieved without having eliminated the I or ego and without having eliminated the body of desires, which is the lunar astral body. The two souls must be one. This is the great alliance between the medieval knight and the lady. We find this in the books of chivalry. El Romancero, Ballads, Count Roland, the wandering troubadours. The knight who fights for his lady is the human soul. The lady is the spiritual soul. The knight must fight for his lady. If he does not do so, he remains without her. In order to attain total illumination, the knight, the knight must totally integrate with his lady and fight for her in every moment until the lotus of a thousand petals is developed. 
In the great matrimony or alchemical wedding of Manas Buddhi, the Manas gives the illumination, without which one cannot have the complete development of the thousand-petaled Sarasrara chakra. With matrimony, a spark is produced, and illumination follows. This is the result of the great alliance. The divine spark in the pineal gland gives illuminated intuition along with polyvision. This is the total triumph. Illuminated intuition is superior to clairvoyance. The spiritual sun is what counts. The midnight sun guides and orients us. Another name for this card, Arcanum 19, is the sun. One must await for everything from the west, await nothing from the east. The sun Sirius is the central sun, the gravitational point of the Milky Way. The goal of our studies is to enter into the absolute. In order to attain this, we must free ourselves from the laws of the seven cosmos. which rule us. With the Alliance, we are liberated from the 96 laws of the Abyss, the Trito Cosmos, the 48 laws of the human being, the Microcosmos, the 24 laws of the Earth, Mesocosmos, the 12 laws of the Solar System, Deuterocosmos, the 6 laws of the Galaxy, Macrocosmos, The Three Laws of the Firmament, Aeocosmos. The One Law of the Solar Absolute, Protocosmos. And then we enter the Absolute. The arrival at the Absolute is sown with renunciations and death. One must renounce omnipotence and even the omniscience in order to enter into the Absolute. Synthesis of Arcanum 19 The philosophical stone is the seed, the semen, which as we mentioned both male and female have. Whosoever practices sexual magic daily is working with the philosophical stone. A good spouse is all we really need in order to work with the philosophical stone. So that's the end of the information that we wanted to present this evening. We're going to Look at the questions and comments now. Looks like there's already some here. Uh, it says, if Arcanum 19 is the Arcanum of Alliance, does it relate with Arcanum 33 Alliance? It must uh, be related, right? Because we know 33 is related to the 33 vertebra, the 33 degrees of occult masonry, um, related with the Kundalini. So there must be some kind of relationship there. And 3 plus 3 equals 6. 6 is man between vice and virtue, right? The, the human being that has to make that decision about what to do with the, the creative energy, the terrible struggle between love and desire. And so if we know how to do that, which we should have understood through Arcanum 18, then we know... As it mentioned also, that desire in this arcanum, arcanum 19, that desire is the great trickster. And that we need to get out of that. We need to stop falling into that um, trap of desire in order to be freed, in order to liberate ourselves. So yeah, 
it must it must somehow be related and i think the the cards are similar any other questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the comments area Well, uh, we can't do a meditation tomorrow due to a scheduling conflict or next week or the week after that. So it's going to be a little bit before we can do meditation. Um, next week is in uh, North America. We celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States at least next Thursday. And so we're not going to have a class. So we'll be back the following uh, which I think is the 1st of December. Let's see. Yeah, so we'll come back on the 1st of December for for the Arcanum 20. We'll try and uh, see if we can get through these Arcana in um, by the end of the year. And then we got another class for you called Hermetic Masonry that we think you'll like a lot. It's related to the study of uh, esoteric masonry and Kabbalah. They merge together. Anyone who's studied um, what they call Freemasonry, you'll find that there is a lot of Kabbalistic symbolism. Now that we've studied these arcana, we'll see how they relate to initiatic symbolism because really that's what uh, masonry is, hermetic masonry being specifically um, the study of initiatic symbolism. The whole point of, of studying all of this stuff is so that we can understand the path that we need to walk, which is an internal path. That is um, how to get closer to divinity within ourselves. So that's the purpose of, of studying this material, to understand that and to, to get closer to our own inner divinity, to develop that relationship. And, you know, it doesn't require any, any payments um, of physical money, so to speak. We're not requiring anything like that. It's not a, uh, you know, marketing scheme or something like that. It may require karmic payments. It may require personal uh, debts be paid, but that's particular to us. Um, see, another person says, thank you on the uh, comments area. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for your attention. We hope this is uh, helpful. Obviously, it's helped us, and that's why we're sharing it. And we hope it's helping you as well. We want to wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're celebrating that in the coming week. Otherwise, we want to uh, just wish you the best in your esoteric work. <laughs>